welcome to the live hive. I am Sarah with Scroll and Post, and we are so excited today. We're about to start introductions some, to some great women who have some wonderful businesses, and we have a great speaker today. So, um, number one, would you like to go ahead and introduce yourself? Of course. Good morning, ladies. I'm so glad to be on this platform finally. I know it's been like long overdue. My name is Ivy Trevitazzo. Uh, I am a regional vice president with a New York Stock Exchange company called Primerica, and I'm up out of the northeast part of the United States, and basically what I do is I help uh, our families, you know, learn how to earn more income. I teach them how to become properly protected, debt-free, and financially independent through asset management, debt consolidation, things as such, and, uh, you know, so my main mission is to be able to help the public learn how money works. Uh, and it's been a passion of mine. I've been in this field for about 12 years, empowering people with the education necessary to make good money decisions. And, uh, and so I'm looking forward to what I'm going to learn today. And thank you so much, Sarah, for the invite. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. My name is Aja Van Zika. I'm a master life coach over at LuxCoachLifestyle.com. And I'm sorry for all the noise, even though I just told my kid that I'm live here and he was going to have to get out. He chose to make all the noise. So sorry. <laughs> um, I help coaches to up level their coaching skills and create the high level results that they want to have and have more certainty around their coaching abilities so that they can manifest their um, their soul-led Lux Coach lifestyle, and uh, I have a, a coaching membership that I just started, and it is fantabulous. I'm really excited about it. I will tell you guys later about that by popping it into the chat, so you guys can have all the information about it. Thank you so much. It's always wonderful to be here. Thank you, Sarah, and I'm looking forward to just learning more about everybody here. Thank you so much. Hey everyone, my name is Kelly Van Hovland. Um, I have been in the digital space for about 12 years. I was a social media manager and marketing, marketing strategist for a couple of small businesses. Um, I've recently been feeling called to change a little bit what I'm doing. So I am launching a business that helps service providers and freelancers to ditch that feast or famine lifestyle that one month everything is great and you're working 80 hour weeks and the next month there's nothing left. So I'm helping them to put in place the plan to market effectively and efficiently so that they can earn a consistent income, replace their full-time income, and step into life as a CEO that they were meant to be. Um, as part of that, I am launching a new Facebook group January 1st. I'm kicking off the year with, I'm super excited about this, 100 interviews with 100 freelancers or service providers who have already achieved that dream. They're already making a full-time income. Um, so I'll put the link to that Facebook group in the chat here in a little bit. And I'm super excited to be here. This is my second time attending and I'm so excited to see, to meet all of you, find out what you're up to and learn a ton today. So thank you. I will introduce the speaker. So excited. You. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. All right. And then of course she can pick up from where I, I, I leave off and share more great things about her, herself. Uh, today we have Charlene with us. She's a seasoned entrepreneur for over 22 years experience and making over six figures in business with serving entrepreneurs to achieve speed to solutions surrounding their everyday sales and marketing and systems operation. Using her black belt Lean Six Sigma certification, she's le uh, led her to work with small to medium companies, women entrepreneurs and Enterprise Inc. 500 companies across the country. Her passion is being a leader in revenue generating strategies national speaker, certified BYB trainer, coach, and B2B networking pro. Uh, be inspired by her and motivated to scale and grow your business. Let's go 2021. Yes, yes, yes. Sarah, thanks so much for that intro. You know, it's one thing to do these things, but together collectively to have you, Sarah, lead us in this opportunity to have all of us entrepreneurs on here today. Thank you so much for believing in us. And it's because it's a reflection of who you are. You believe in yourself, you want yourself to grow, and so you've attracted us women to be part of this community. So thank you, Sarah, for making this time. This is, you know, entrepreneur is just another name for work. And that's every one of us in this call today, I'm sure everyone has taken that deep breath and said, you know, I'm sure many times, do I keep going? Do I keep doing what I'm doing? How, how do I 
get through this bottleneck in my business. And for each one of us on this call today, you know, we're, we're always led, I believe, to the next solution that is literally going to answer maybe, you know, a question you had in your mind. Maybe you're searching for it, but you just haven't really found the right person to ask. Or maybe you're looking for a community that it's safe to ask these hard questions. And so today's topic, you know, when Sarah and I were going back and forth, I really had to deep dive into what we need to hear. Not only what we need to hear, but to keep it simple. So ladies, if you've got, you know, your iPads out, if you've got your notebook out, whatever you use uh, to deep dive into your business today, I want to invite you to be present, to be committed to learning, just like Sarah, I love that. Asia, Kelly, I want to see, you know, whatever you're using to, to jot down all of your, your inspiration, because sales is an art, and sales is not something that everyone likes. How many of us in this group today love to do sales? I know, right? It's that moment where you're like, oh, oh, I just want them to come to me. Why don't they just come to me because I'm the expert? Why don't they just come to me because I can solve the problem? And so that's kind of why I want to keep it simple today. So there's a couple of ground rules. When I get to speak and train and really pour into each one of you, I want you to do three things. One, be present. Two, let yourself hear the things that you need to hear and then let that process so that the notes you take is a solution to what you're needing. And I wanna really be clear on this. It has been found that when people learn, people learn differently, right? Kinesthetically, visually, um, by touch and feel, I mean, whatever it is, sometimes we're so quick to write all the notes down because we don't wanna miss anything where we really missed everything. So I want to give you permission to not have to feel like you have to drop everything on this paper because you're trying to mad dash these notes. You know, Sarah's gonna get this recording for us. I just want you to be present to process. Because a lot of times when you're on a sales call, when you are presenting, when you are uh, trying to work, you know, one-on-one -on -one with a client, you have to be present, but you also have to process what they're needing. And a lot of times we miss that part of the sales conversation. And the third rule is that everything you need, everything that is inside of you, everything that you're worried about, everything that you're needing is going to come to you in this presentation. Uh, because you're going to allow it to stick to you. So the common denominator in success of sales is ourselves. It's not anything else outside of us. It's us as a person. And I know that's such a high level because, you know, for some of us, when you're dealing with high ticket items, like one of our programs that we, we have is $25,000. And that's a high ticket for some businesses. Sometimes a high ticket for you might be $3,000. Maybe sometimes it's $500. The price tag isn't the outward commitment of your sales process being successful. It's you as the person providing the opportunity to share what problems you solve for that client, for that company. So I know that's really a different way of approaching sales, but when you look at the high, high, high level uh, CEOs who, who run companies who, who value, you know, $100 million in revenue, $300 million in revenue, it's not ever about the price. It's always about what solution you can solve. So let's deep dive. I, I've given you a couple of golden, golden nuggets there, and it's just being present where you can absorb this and let it stick to you. So my first question, and in the chat, go ahead and put this in there. How many of us love sales? I know everyone's like, oh! It's that hard question. And if you love sales, um, <laughs> I want to say you're the anomaly. But if you, you don't, yes, I like to buy for, for others. You know, that's kind of fun. And, you know, Asia, I like that. Nope, not me. It is just, it's just who we are, right? When it comes, Kelly, you know, it's, it's just this, oh, there's this, there's this middle between us and the opportunity. And a lot of times when we talk about how to build a sales funnel, before we ever build, Ivy, I like that. Thank you. No thanks. It's, it's just really this, this, oh, this feeling. And everyone knows that feeling when I make that face because that's that feeling inside of them. But when you deal with sales, before we build the sales funnel, this is the most important part of the build. And, and I will use an example. When you're building a home, you're laying the foundation down. 
everything is critical to the foundation of that home because no matter if you build a three bedroom, two bath, you know, two car garage home, or, you know, three stories high, or, you know, 10,000 square feet, the foundation is critical to that massive build. And so today we're going to talk before we build the funnel, the foundation is you. How you feel about sales, how you feel about yourself, how you feel about the value you're bringing to the marketplace, because your revenue is a direct reflection of the impact that you have in the marketplace. I want you to let that stick. I want you to let that marinate, the impact you bring. So if you're a woman entrepreneur and you are coaching for some of you on this call, you guys are gonna coach small business owners who wanna use social media. Some of you wanna coach them in their mindset. Some of you are gonna work with them through the Facebook group to, to bring them on as a client. You yourself have to create the value of your impact. Now, in the chat, if you can summarize this in five words or less, what impact do you bring to your marketplace? I'll give you guys just a hot second there. I know some of you are like, but sure, I have my 60 second pitch ready. I've got my, you know, my, my 10 paragraph, you know, explanation, right? Your impact has to be so crystal clear because clarity is the glue to sales. Remember now, we are building the foundation of your sales. Help coaches become better coaches. Love that. Okay, let's see. Some of you are thinking, and that's what I love. It wouldn't be valuable for, you to, for me to be on here if I didn't help you think differently, do things differently, and adjust. So I just want to tell you that that's my value. I'm creating my impact immediately in our call today. Okay, so as you guys are pouring that into the chat, I'm going to definitely see it pop up. Okay, I love that. I help coaches coach better. There you go. Remember, this is refinery, right? This is the foundation. This is being so powerful in your impact. So it's crystal clear to your customer, especially a lot of us who are service providers. Uh, love Prime America. One of my clients is a Prime America. She just hit $50,000 in revenue this month. Um, you know, just, I just know, I just know where she is. Uh, she also wants to partner up in a, another business venture together. So, you know, a lot of my clients become partners because of the impact. I love that, Sarah. Yep. Optimize their social media. Market. I love, love, love that. Teaching others how, to, how money works. I love that. So here is just a small adjustment. The impact you make needs to be result driven. I want you to write that down. So Asia, when you're talking to coaches, I want you to talk about the result I help coaches make more money. See how the result brings them in? It helps them focus on, I have a problem that needs a solution. I have a problem that needs your solution. So Asia, when you go recruiting, right? When you're, when you're looking at the landscape of 100 entrepreneurs and you're trying to find those coaches, they either are going to be flat out telling you their problem or they're going to kind of fish through it like well I don't really know what my problem is and that's hard to close a sale right because they don't even know what their problem is so the impact you make in this five words needs to show the result that you want your client to have because they have a problem that you're trying to solve how many of us that's just a, a small pivot but a huge awakening in how you pitch yourself that should be that should not only be a a mind opener, mind blowing, uh, an opportunity for you to, to improve your, your, your sales, but it's to give you clarity. Okay, so we're building the foundation. Here you go, help coaches confidently coach anyone. Good, you're, it's, it's, it's changing, right? You're now massaging it and that's what's powerful. Sarah, this is gonna be a great session for all of these ladies because it's allowing them to adjust. It's allowing them just to make one to two degree changes. That's not a lot. But the clearer we are in our messaging, the clearer it is for people to understand she is solving this problem. Okay, so that's the impact. That's the second layer of the foundation is what is your impact? What is the solution you're bringing to the table? The third piece into laying the foundation of your sales is to make it easy for your prospect to find you. 
Now, for some of us, you know, Facebook groups is, is definitely a six to seven figure income generator. Some of us, you know, have our networking when networking was, you know, in person and we had one-to-ones. You know, 90% of my business has been referral based. I have not paid a dollar in a single ad ever in my 22 years of experience, 16 years specifically as, as a CMO. We have not spent a dollar on ads because of the referral generator that we have in our business. So as we've pivoted this 2020 into more of a virtual space, the second part of your foundation needs to be, can they find you? And I'm going to make this really clear. How many of you have 10 to 15 social platforms that you're just like overwhelmed by? Anyone? Anyone trying to be everywhere? Right? Parlor pops up. Oh, I gotta be on Parlor. I gotta be on Instagram. I gotta be on Pinterest. And I'm like, that's a lot of work, right? And then you've got all these platforms that you're trying to use to, you know, buffer. You're trying to be on five platforms because you realize that it takes 200 hours of your time to post. And you're just like, I'm tired. It shouldn't be this hard, right? And I, and I use it just kind of the idea behind keeping it simple. Okay, so this layer of foundation is so that your, your client, your prospect can find you. Now, CEOs, based on Forbes um, 2019 article, they said in 2020, if you do not have a podcast, this is where you're going to make or break if your client is a CEO of a company. You need to be on a podcast. You need to have a podcast. And that rings true. You know, a lot of my clients are CEOs, um, Inc. 500, Inc. 100, uh, fintech companies. You know, we have the higher end clients uh, that we service. And podcast is great. I think that's a great, great place to be. But for a lot of us, where the middle is where we have the most opportunity, which is, you know, social because we can reach more, we can do more. We're probably in 100 groups. How many of you are in five groups right now? If you looked at your Facebook, okay, how many of you are in 10? Okay, right? And so we go wide. We, how, many, how many of us have 20 groups? I know some of us might uh, go, should I raise my hand or not? It's okay. The thing that matters is that you want your ideal client to find you. Now, I'm going to say this because a lot of times people, you know, get, when we get on a call, well, sure, I want to be in a group with 70,000 women entrepreneurs. I want to be in a group of 15,000. Hey, the groups I'm in have 34,000. The algorithm cannot get you in front of all 34,000. So can you imagine spinning your wheels every day thinking, I've got 10 groups and they've got, you know, over 350,000 members total that I can sell to. The quality of engagement changes because the algorithm doesn't allow you to see all of them. Right. And so you have to engage, you have to post, you have to answer post, you have to, you know, contribute totally fine. But this is the key. Your prospect, especially the current business you're in, and this is the reason why we're going to build our sales funnel accordingly, is could you handle a hundred new clients? If you had 35,000 people in that group, could your business handle a hundred new clients? When you grow, and you move that needle, that's the basis of the funnel we're gonna build today. It depends on how much your business can absorb. For some of you, if you had five new clients today, right? Like for me, I take about 15 to 20 calls a week and that's all pre-qualified before they even come to me. They've gone through a couple of touches just to make sure that you know, they, they wanna solve their problem. If we can do 15 to 20, right? And then I have my social selling team. I have my um, executive admin who, who creates another layer to, to vet them before they come to me. If that can happen and they can grow quickly and they can move along in my program quickly, then I can service more. But the goal is to fix your systems that you currently have as you build out your sales funnel. And that's a huge golden nugget. Your sales funnel, needs to be built so that your operating system, your, your fulfillment, how you coach, how you mentor, how you, how you get the discussion, Ivy, you know, on the kitchen table is what I used to call, you know, the success rate, right, of a lot of things that you guys do is the kitchen table sale. You don't have that. You have Zoom, right? People are freaked out. They don't want to see nobody. They don't want to hear nobody. You know, Asia, you're virtual, so a lot of that support's going to come virtually. Our sales 
platforms, whatever Aja. we use. Aja. Yes, sir. Aja. I'm so sorry, Aja. Okay. No, 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 no. I decided that um, I was changing my name to Asia. <laughs> everybody calls me Asia, and I really like it. So that's why I never said anything. No, no, it's okay. Keep going. Asia, Asia, it's, it's okay. Is it? I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. Um, so when we talk about the sales platform, we want to make sure that we can fulfill on the other end. So you want to work smart, not hard. You want to have laser focus. You want to have a target for where you're selling so that your platform knows who you are so that they can come to you. Now, there are going to be three types of customers, right? One that lurks around. That's your prospect. Don't, have you ever been that lurker? I'm not ready to buy it. I'm just going to do all the free stuff, right? I'm going to do their challenge. I think that's good. You're like, dang, I keep lurking. Who am I going to buy from? And then every day there's a new pop-up. I call entrepreneur disease ADH disease because we like want everything. We're like, well, let's do it all. We, we totally are. So the lurker, okay? We've either been the lurker or we, we know the lurkers who, who lurk around us and we're totally fine. Second is a person who's like, I really have a problem but there's so much noise in the space. I don't know who to buy from. How many of us are experiencing that right now, right? You get on a call and they're like, well, let me think about it. I want to think about it because there's so many options. And you're like, okay, right? Um, and then you're trying to deep dive into their problem, like why they're not buying right now. And sometimes it's timing, sometimes it's money. And so you qualify them as like, okay, follow up, you know, number two type of client. We'll put them on the back burner for the next three months, six months, nine months, and whatever nurturing campaigns you've got set up and then you've got your number three they're anxious they just need to solve a problem they're the ones at the doctor's office pounding the door and saying I need to solve my problem give me whatever drug you have I need to solve this pain so a lot of times in that one two and three category they are not going to be in the thousands the number three potential customer is probably going to be your five to 10% of your funnel. And if you look at that number, then your messaging through what I'm going to teach you on building your sales funnel has to be loud enough for that person to want to buy. Okay. So when I hop on a call with someone and they're like, sure, I've got to solve a problem. I, my business part, like a client of ours right now, my business partner and I just, you know, dissolve their partnership. I've got a jewelry business. I got to sell. I'm a brick and mortar. 2020 killed us, blah, blah, blah. I mean, they go through all the list. She's like, we need a social selling strategy right now. And I am hungry and I want to get to work. We scream at those kind of entrepreneurs, those business owners, because they're ready to solve their problem, right? They're ready to take action. They're ready to solve their problem. They're ready to work with you. And I want to be really honest. I don't like working with people where I've got to work for them and do everything for them. That's like, why are we, why are we in business? If you want me to do your business, then I, then you're not going to be the business owner. So you really want to make sure your marketing is shouting to that number third customer, right? Ivy, if they have a money problem because they have a death or they have some sort of pain, like they're trying to leave a legacy for their children, that's what you need to be screaming. Because those people are ready to sign. Why would you want to waste so much time, hours, and effort on number one and two? Who's just like, I'm not ready. And you're like, you know what? I only want to work with the number three client because that five to 10% is going to bring you number two. Okay? That strategy weaves into building your sales funnel. We literally built a sales funnel for a $300 million tech company whose clients are Tony Robbins, Dean Graciosi. I mean, these are the kind of sales funnels we build because we need to trigger a sale. It's not about a nine month sales process. It's about who's screaming louder than everyone else to solve my problem. Okay, Kelly, I, I definitely have a passion and love for what you're doing. I totally love the fact that you're making this pivot. You know, all of us make pivots in our business. We just add another vertical to our business and we just create a package that's specifically for them. So as I talk to this part, I, I really want to get your feedback. When you're building your sales funnel, I am going to show you how simple I teach this. Here's my piece of paper, M-E-S. 
your marketing creates engagement that creates the sale. I know, right? You're like, Char's gonna have like 15 slides. I'm gonna have a slide. I don't need that. I got no time. I gotta go Christmas shopping today. I'm just kidding. I, I already did that in November. I'm just like, today's a nice day just to go buy whatever I think I wanna buy. And we've only bought from small businesses. So ladies, I want you to know, people like us exist. Small businesses is where our money went this year because we gotta keep each other open and alive. So let me show this again so that you understand. Marketing, engagement, sales. So in building your foundation, how many of you have already answered your marketing needs in building the first part of your funnel, right? You gotta scream louder than everyone else. You wanna scream to the number three customer who's ready to buy because they gotta solve their problem, they're in pain. They are just, Kelly, they hate social media. They want to know how to solve their problems because their content is you know, cut and paste, okay? Engagement. This is where the sales funnel gets a little tricky because some of you will use Facebook groups, which is awesome. We, we love our Facebook groups. Uh, we pre-qualify them before they even get into the funnel. And the funnel is the Facebook group is a step, right? That engagement part is in the funnel where you need to build where they're going to see you, where they're going to get to know you, and where you're going to be consistent. So we did something 45 days ago where we created a Facebook group specifically for women entrepreneurs. And the, the emotion that the Facebook group exuded was women of worth. Because a lot of times as women, we are attached to, if I can give, that validates me, right? It's, it's kind of like this worth exchange. Like I want to give the world everything I've got because I, I love them. And that's just normal. That's the feminine energy in us. So this Facebook group is specifically for those who want to create multi six figure income. And there's a very small number because we pre-qualify them. I don't want a hundred thousand when there's too many lurkers. Remember my number one customer and my number two customer aren't going to always want to buy but I don't wanna waste my time if my number three people need my attention. Do you see how you qualify even in your building of your engagement, okay? So engagement is so powerful because they get to know you, they get to like you, they get to trust you. But more importantly, they get to see the results. People buy on results and I want you to put that on a freaking banner, whiteboard, whatever is in front of your computer, Kelly, People buy results. So if you're going to lessen their pain, if you're going to make more money for them, if you're going to help them change your mindset, if, if Sarah's going to get you on a platform to talk to other entrepreneurs, she's selling a result, right? She's giving you a result to your problem. Okay. The last part of engagement, and you know, obviously I just want to pour into you. So please forgive me if you're like, oh my gosh, I'm trying to write, think, process, let it stick. That's okay. I want you to walk away and go, wow, I wanna work smarter and harder on my business, but I wanna know what the target is. The third thing on engagement is to know who your ideal client is. And I want to be able to give you the power of this one part. If there's anything you take away from this training today, hopefully you take more than one, but if there's anything I can give you and pour into you, is I want you to have the power of saying no. No in your schedule, right? No, that does not allow me to focus on the, the three ideal clients that I want. No, in my engagement, I don't want the lurkers. So I'm not going to focus on the lurkers. I'm going to focus on number three, who's going to bring me number two. I want to say no, because I don't have time to nurture the funnel for three, six, nine months. Right? I want you to say no to making it complicated in your life. I want you to say no if it's not going to bring you the happiness and joy that you want because you have a team member that you, you need to get rid of because they're not contributing, they're not seeing the vision, they're not engaged, right? Say no. No is more powerful than the word yes. In the chat, what is one thing you need to say no to today? What is one thing you need to say no to today?
I love that. Cleaning my kitchen. Well, and, and, you know, sometimes like what I do is I hire out certain things. Like we have a local company here that, um, start as an entrepreneur program and he came to me as a referral and he does meal delivery service. We just opened a pantry for him in a grocery store so he could stay open to the rest of the pandemic. And now we get our meals from him. I don't have to cook. Not because I don't love to cook. Let me tell you, I'm from Hawaii. I believe in food. Food is my best friend. Like I hug that, I kiss it, I do whatever it needs. But you know what? When I can get home and dinner is done and we are supporting a local business. Let me just tell you, we feel good about giving. Okay. I love this. I love what's in the chat. Love, love, love this. Being everything to everyone. Okay. To my teammates, bring me to the wrong market clients. Yep. No to distraction. I love that. And, and that's the honor. Okay. So I want to just be really vulnerable. We are all part of the entrepreneur disease. We have it. I want this, this, and this, and this. I'm like, yo, yeah, great. Trying to build multiple business one. Sarah, I have 10 businesses. I own a franchise. <laughs> it's so crazy. Like, I'm like, do I have nothing else? I have SaaS products. Like, I totally get it. But there's great ways to maximize your time. We could totally do another talk on that. And if you look at my account, I'm like, how the hell did she get that done? Because I say no to the things that do not help me hit my goal, right? And I want to just, I'm not going to even go down that rabbit hole because when you're building this engagement part of your funnel, you have to be able to know what the no is, right? Because it blocks the sale. Like if you're going to talk to 10 people who are not qualified to even talk to you, you're blocking the sales of the people who do want to talk to you. Does that make sense? Super clear, right? Kelly, when you make this relaunch and pivot in your company, if your calendar is filled with the number three client prospect, you're going to close more business faster because you're not worrying about the 10 who don't need you. And women, we want to help everyone. I thank God you put that in the chat. I want to help everyone, my team, blah, blah, blah. But guess what? If I didn't train them right, the blame's on me. That's why they're bringing me the wrong people. And there is a rule on my team, I'll just kind of tell you. My entire team's been virtual for 16 years. I've had a couple here and there that I've had in-house just because depending on the project we were working on or the client that we needed, but we've remotely worked virtual. There is a rule. If you don't know something, come and ask me, but I want you to first figure it out yourself. That's the first rule in our business because I want to have entrepreneur team that solves problems. They think, they process, they find the solution and they take care of it. So just kind of want to give you that permission. Another no that I really loved on here. And, and, you know, Sarah, one of the things I think has been really powerful because you've brought people together is your time, right? Like you want to bring value to the people that are on this call today. So Sarah has been learning the word no really well. She wants to know who are going to make the biggest contribution to the community I'm trying to build. So her no is crafted in her yes. Right, she vets people out before they come and speak. They vet, she vets people out before they, they figure out, okay, is this person going to be, you know, a good contribution to my team, to my, the people I'm trying to groom? She figures that out before she even launches. So when you create this engagement part of the funnel, I want you to know that you do all of the no's up front so that the yeses can be built out because when you get to the sales call, it's going to make the sale close easier for your client. Not for you, for your client. I know you're like, what the heck, Char? So let's dive into the last part of it. Here's the sales call. So you get on the sales call with you, right? You've done everything up front. At this point of the call, there are three things that I coach sales team who close with Tony Robbins kind of clients, okay? And these are people with relationships. These are people with, who worked hard to engage and, and tell them the product. Three things. One, why are you here on this call? Ask that in your own nice way. Don't do it the Shar way. Like, why are you on this call? Ask them, why are you on the call? Why are you here making time to talk to me? Why are you here giving up 30 minutes of your time to talk to me? And let them tell you their problem. 
Let them tell you where they're thinking. Because number two is to say, well, this is the solution I have for your problem. Let them convince you that they need you. Not you convincing them. Because when you have to convince them, the power of the sale goes to the prospect. It is no longer you. And if you're solving their problem, guys, in that last part of the sales funnel, you should be the one they come to wanting to solve their problem. You're the expert. You're the authority. You're the one that spent hundreds of hours of training, Kelly, in your career as being marketing and being a social media manager. You've spent hundreds of hours trying to solve problems. Why are you going to try and convince them? You're spending your time, your expertise, your years of experience, right? So they need to convince you why they need to work with you. And I'm going to go back to my first part of the foundation. You are the common denominator in the success or failure of your sales. No one else is. I mean, if your team is bringing you the wrong prospects, what are you doing in training them so that they can bring you the right ones? Play this video for them. I don't know. Whatever you got to do. Get in the mindset that you're the expert. You're the authority. And you know what? Some of you are just kind of starting, right? Some of you are just like, you know, Shar, maybe I made the wrong sale. How many of us have done that? You're like, I hate this client. This is the worst kind of client I've ever gotten. But you made the sale. I told this Inc. 500 company, 17 years debt-free. I mean, they, they were listed literally Inc. 500 since 2017. I said, how many wrong sales have you guys made? A ton. I said, are you paying more money to fix those problems? Yep. So learn from the big corporate companies who spend millions of dollars to fix a problem because guess what? When you're a small business owner, thousands of dollars is feeling like a millions of dollars. I don't care who you are. You lose a thousand dollars, that means you had pain because that thousand dollars could have been ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars. And that's a lot of money for a small business. Okay. So number three. So you've right, remember, you're not convincing them, they're convincing you. And you see how the end of that sales is all woven into the first part of the funnel and how you market and how you create engagement. Because when they come to you in the sales part, you're just like, hey, here, here it is. This is our solution. So the third, and this is probably just, I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible because each one of you have different businesses and you know, creating funnels that is unique to your own totally can do. But I just want to give you kind of, here's the big picture. Let me break it down so that you can, add what you need to and bolt on what stuff you, you feel like you need, right? And this is the third part, which is really missed. I think a lot of times on sales calls, um, and it's also kind of missed because however we showed up in the call, like, you know, I, I remember when we first started, it was like, we can help the world. And I'm like, yeah, let's help the world, right? So we're wasting our time, wasting our time, wasting our time. It's wisdom and time that's taught us all these things. But the third thing that's so important, right, is that if they are not ready to close, if they're like, hey, I got to think about it. Hey, I want to, you know, I, I need to figure out my finances. Hey, I want to, you help them make the commitment. Let me say this really clear. You know what? It sounds like this program would work for you. It sounds like you want to coach more people. You want to get them the results that they want. It sounds like, you know, you really, you know, believe in your business. You believe in yourself. That's why you got on this call today. Empower them, right? I want you to make that as part of the ingredient, but I want you them to commit to something. What I mean by that is, you know what? I want you to think about it. Let's, let's give you 24 hours. You know what? Let's get it. Show another call. Let's hop on that. Oh, you know what? It's a money objection. Okay. What, what is your problem going to solve right now for you? If you start this six week program and figure out your holes in your business, how quickly can you create some revenue? I want you to commit to something because it gets their mind thinking that they want to change. They want your solution. Okay. This is the secret ingredient is when they get their mind into committing, then they're willing to spend their money. They commit themselves. You never are convincing them. You're like, we got on this call. You want to solve your problem. 
awesome. Sounds like you want to do this, this, and this. Great. If in the next six weeks we can produce that revenue with you working hard and you doing your part, like you have to make it all about them. It has to be all about them because that's the ingredient that makes you successful is them. Your customer is who makes you successful business owners. It's not you. It's your client. It's your customer. Sarah's success on her multiple businesses is going to be based on the customer she brings in. It has nothing to do with her. Kelly, I know you know this from corporate America. The clients that come in are the clients that make you successful. It has nothing to do with us. Because we didn't get into business because of us. We got in business because we were there trying to help our client get the goals that they want. And in this third step, when you come to the close, right? You want to be able to take their money right on the spot. They're like, yep, I'm ready to sign. Great. Let's take your money. Don't send them an invoice. Say, hey, I've got the invoice on the way. Keep them on the call. Get the payment on the spot. Okay, if they're going to Venmo you, if you're going to work out a payment plan, whatever that looks like. Because that commitment is an emotional and mental decision. They emotionally buy, but they mentally close themselves because they need to solve a problem. They emotionally buy and they solve it with their brain. And this isn't woo-woo stuff, guys. This is like human psychology. This is like how we buy as humans, how we buy as people. Super simple funnel. I want you to take this and record and listen to it, audio, take the content. If you have Otter, I mean, whatever you gotta do. These are just so simple that it's like, why is it so simple? Because it has to be. If it's not simple, why would you do it in business? Why do you wanna work harder and not smarter? Um, as, I, as I close this part of the presentation and training, Sarah, what I wanna do is kind of listen, leave some time for Q&A. Um, let people kind of absorb this, let the stickiness happen. Because I'm sure a lot of you are like, wow, I gotta go look at my sales funnels I've got. Some of your intentional doing, what, what are you spending time on? How are you, how are you putting your team? You know, I, this is important. If your team can be symbiotic with what you're trying to do on the top end of your business because you're the leader, imagine the growth of the whole team. It doesn't matter who you put in the seat, it's the systems you have in your business that allow you to scale and grow. That's what my Black Belt Lean Six Sigma certification means scaling and growing your business you're going to get stuck if you don't have the systems and operations that's why the funnel in my my training today with each one of you is to literally create your system so you can make decisions based on your system so you know where to adjust and tweak it so i love questions i want to know more about you like i'm here to answer questions and just give you permission to be vulnerable because and I'll leave with this, Sarah, and then I'll turn it over. One of the reasons why we are so much more successful with talking to CEOs and their teams and talking to business owners is because they can't talk to anyone else. They can't go talk to their husband. They can't go talk to their spouse or their friend or their mom. Like, oh, honey, that's okay. Go ahead and do whatever you want to do. You're like, that is not the help I need. Right? I know. You're like, I don't want to go to dinner. I need to solve this problem. They're like, honey, whatever you're doing is great. You're like, that is not the moral support I need right now. I need you to help me solve my problem. So we are successful because we've gone through it. I've owned a franchise during 2020. Can you believe that? And we're opening up two new locations in 2021. Um, been in corporate space, no in and out product-based businesses. We launched Charlotte's Web, which is one of the legacy companies for CBD in the state. And now everyone comes to me that's in that space. So it's not that I don't have experience. It's that your business feels like it's so unique and it's not. Everyone has had the same company. You're just trying to make it unique to yourself, which is totally great and awesome. But guess what? This sales funnel I just gave you is a sales funnel system that everyone runs. It just depends on how you do the moving parts in it. Okay, Sarah, I'm going to turn the time over to the, the group and let them ask me questions. Oh, thanks, Ivy. It is awesome. I just love to pour into you. Like, Sean, stop giving us more. I'm like, I know, but I just want to. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions?
I'll start with a question. Okay. Um, when you say, I, I know we're talking about sales funnels and systems, but when you're going from say five or 10 clients to a hundred clients, what would you say is the most important system per se? Well, when you're at a hundred clients, there's three things, right? When you're, what you did at 10, is it the same formula you're going to use for a hundred? So I think I just want to kind of set out that disclaimer because, you know, Excel papers, you know, post-its on your desk isn't going to work, right? It's just, just not possible. A couple of systems. You've got to do three things in your systems. One, you have to figure out your sales. So if you're going to use pipe drive, if you're going to use, you know, a CRM, um, there's a CRM, my guys, that is only $15 a month and it was voted the number one CRM in 2020. It's called lessannoyingcrm.com. And it's robust. Like the client that gave that to me, she runs a 10 figure company and she just uses that CRM. The second one is communication. Okay. So I'm just going to email is, is still a good foundation for your, your sales process, Sarah. Like when you're talking about like growing from 10 to hundred, that's, that's normal. But text has an 89% open rate. So if you can weave in a text platform into your sales, that's really smart because it's engagement. It's something that creates instant attention. And then third, when you're talking about a system, is what don't you do well in your business? Either hire out for that, but before you hire out, make sure you write a list of the results you want. So like, if I was Kelly, right? And I was like, okay, what results do you want? She should be going to the client and saying, these are the results I'm gonna give you. Versus, I'm gonna do these posts that are like, no one cares. What result are you gonna get me? Well, I'm gonna get you engagement. I'm gonna free up your time. I'm gonna do it. So buy systems on results. Because Sarah, like, like for the most part, a lot of us, you know, as women, we're very social. We like to engage. That's just kind of who we are. That's how we're built. But when you're running 10 clients to 100 clients, you're no longer got time to do all that engagement. So either hire out someone specifically to do that, but more importantly, if you're gonna deal directly with that number three client who's like screaming from the rooftops, right? And is like, Sarah, I saw you and I needed you to solve my problem, then that's where you need to spend your time because those are the higher ticket client items that you wanna be selling, right? Whether it's a $50,000 program, 100,000, whatever you wanna be selling. If you know you need to do those touches until you can actually get a social selling team member or someone that's specifically to your sales, then that's where your focus is. So that third part really depends on the model that you're running for your business. But I would say hire out what you don't like because you really want to focus on things, right? That power of no. It goes right back into that decision. Thank you. I really appreciate yes. that answer. Anybody else? Have a question? I think you may have just answered it, but I know that you had made a comment earlier. This is your no has to be crafted in your yes. Um, and so I just wanted you to elaborate a little bit more on that, but I think you kind of hit it right as you were finishing up what you were answering with Sarah's question. So, um, if you could elaborate a little bit more on the, your no has to be crafted into your yes, I'd appreciate it. Okay. So I'll give you an example on a sales call. Um, so one of the programs that we sell is a six week, uh, coach up the CEO program. And it literally is six weeks, like hard, fast intentional because I want my client to get a result. So when we get to the close of that call, her name is Katie, amazing woman. Um, I, I said, this is what we don't do. I'm not here to drag you along. I'm not here to figure out, you know, what you want to do, and what you don't want to do. I'm not here to tell you everything's going to work perfectly. But what I am here to tell you is that we're going to work hard. We're going to work together. And I want you to get a result in that sales, sales, sales. You see how I wove in my no into my yes? And she's like, yep, sure, I'm willing to work. She's one of my most hardworking six-week coaching client because her mentality on the close was, sure, I made more money working with you in 
one week and she's selling vintage jewelry. Like, this is a hard space. Like, what now? Like, who even knows vintage jewelry? She made $1,500 in just a week because I made that shift in her mind. So her no, right, in her mind was, I can't let this, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't not focus on my business. I cannot not do what Sean's saying. I cannot not do show up in my Facebook lives. I, I cannot not do a raffle, right? In her mind, she's like, I am committed to the process of allowing me to level up. And she's been in this business 20 years. She went from a brick and mortar to a virtual. So she had all of the, and ladies, I know this is terrible. I shouldn't say this, but she had all the reasons to fail because she was transitioning from a place she didn't know. She's an older woman who's never done Facebook lives. Like, I'm just telling you, she had all those ingredients to fail. But because she said, I'm going to do this, this, and this, and that was part of my clothes, she's a better client for me. And she's a better client for herself right? Because my goal is the client is what shows the results. It's not me. It's her, right? And she's just like blown away. Like she's moving, she sold her house and yet she's still making money. She's like, how am I doing this, Shar? Because I'm supposed to be really busy right now with life. And I'm like, because I know what to help you say no to and say yes to the things that are making you money. And she's, she's on it. Like, I mean, she's like, consistent she does what she needs to do so i mean that's an example of weaving in your no into the yes because you want great clients who are going to be your biggest fan she's going to be a big fan for me in a very hyper niche space i mean she's not a coach she's not any she's she's selling vintage jewelry like come on how much more hyper niche do you need to be okay thanks for your question i appreciate it thank you yeah. <laughs> um, Asia here. <laughs> yeah. For real, right? You see how that I was like, your name thing. Like, I put her in parentheses, Asia. Like, you know, just I love to mess Asia. up people I mean, like me. Everybody calls. Nobody gets my name right. I love Asia. I've adopted it. I'm now Asia, so it's okay. Um, my question is kind of along the lines of Sarah. I um, am a coach. I've been doing a lot of one-to-one -one coaching for the last basically two years with some group coaching program, short term, thrown into the mix. And now I'm moving, just decided this like two or three days ago. So I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I just decided I that I'm going. <laughs> we do it all day long. That's what we do as entrepreneurs. We're like, well, we're going to do this. Yeah, we are. We're going to do it anyway. I'm, okay, I'm going to do it. Right, exactly. So I'm going to do a membership. And okay. I've been like fighting it for years because in my mind, I have this whole, um, uh, belief that, oh, it's going to be hard. People are going to be coming and going. I'm going to have to keep the number of people I'm going to need in there to make this, you know, viable and successful for myself. It's going to be ridiculous. I know how I do with memberships. I come, I join for a couple of months and then I leave, you know, if it's one of those memberships where you can come right. and go, you know. So, um, so, but now it's like, okay, you know what? I got my beliefs together. I'm good. So now I'm just going into this. So I still have coaching, private coaching clients, which is not I don't have a lot of them now. Like, it's just amazing that December, a lot of the packages ended. So I only have like maybe about five left that are um, still going in maybe through March is they're going to be their last. Um, so it's opened up a lot of space for me to actually put time into the membership, but I've never done this before. And I know, yes, we're entrepreneurs. we we can do hard things. We can do things we've never done before, but on this, on the, on the, the, the difference, as you said, it's different than you marketing for 10 people is going to be different than you marketing for a hundred people. And so I'm a little bit like, well, when you said that, I'm like, well, shoot, what should I be doing, man? I'm like, maybe I should, maybe I'm doing something wrong. I haven't even started yet, but I'm already doing it wrong. <laughs> right. So what's fun is that you're going from a boutique model to a scale and grow model. And when a boutique model is there, you're very high touch, right? Like you're doing everything. You're, you're setting the intention for the group. You're, you're doing all the work, right? You're, you're the mama bear in the group going, I'm going to do it all. But when you go from boutique to a membership level, a scale and grow model, totally two different skill sets. And the reason why there's a different skill set is because now you have to let systems run your business with still keeping you the high touch. You see how that's a hard marriage because you're like, but sure, I want to. Well, then just charge more. If you're going to, you know, if you're going to stay in a boutique model, but you want more money, then charge more, right? That's, that's kind of like the, the, the line that kind of everyone wants to cross over, but they don't know yet. So if you're changing from a boutique to a membership, so I'll just kind of 
I'll tell you more about why I'm a yeah, crazy entrepreneur. Yeah, what's the marketing look like for that? Is How different is it? Well, it's, it's two parts. So let me tell you a story. Then it will kind of illustrate that answer. So we created a SaaS product that uh, we are looking at to sell to LinkedIn. And it's a membership site. And it's membership driven. And we solve problems for corporate CEOs who can't travel during a pandemic, right? Biggest aha moment. Can't solve this problem. Um, we already have a thousand people um, already pre-ordering for eighty dollar a month membership. A month. I I want to put that out there. We built a system because I don't have no time, and two, the marketing is totally different than my boutique business, right? Because that's a whole other business. That's a whole other EIN number. That's a whole other S corp. So your membership can be two things. You can use it as a bridge between your boutique into this next funnel. That's how I would since change some of the marketing. One is say, I have been a boutique, you know, high-end coaching company for coaches, and we are pivoting into membership because we believe in helping you maintain your coaching business monthly. It shouldn't just be one and done. It should be a monthly progression of your business. You see how I'm giving you marketing? right there, you want to pivot into this boutique, into membership. The second thing in the marketing that I would recommend is that you want it to be, we want you to leave from our membership program if you're not doing this, this, and this. We want you to not be a member if you're not going to contribute, if you're not going to grow your business. Do you see how you list the objections up front? So in our membership platform, and, and this is totally common. Like we have membership for this specific SaaS product I have. And then I have a membership piece for just my, my CMO clients. We create a community around it and that we market that. So that's the third piece that we market is the community from the membership you get. The community I mean, membership. Huh? Yeah. So you have a membership. Let's, I'm, I'll use your, yes. So you have a hundred coaching clients, right? That you want to have this membership. The community you're building is the value of why I want to be a member. Okay. I think I get it. So, okay. So here's, here's, here's the verbiage I would use. Our membership brings you a community of like-minded professionals. Oh, like who that. Want to... Yes. Okay. I, okay. I say like a, this is a community of high vibe coaches just like you who are up leveling their coaching game to be able to create the results that any any of their clients want right okay got it so i get what you're saying now okay right so that's the reason why like in in the training i just did clarity is key so you want to get really clear on who you mm -hmm. want your 100 members because how you nurture them whether it's text like i, I just told sarah like get a text platform because that creates engagement two obviously a facebook group three email marketing that still works and then i would let them be a hundred of your raving fans, right? Like have them have such a great experience with you because you want eye touch, you want that emotional, like I get it. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you can't manage a hundred people. It's just not possible. You have to get like community members or some sort of like admin staff to support you. So you need to build an org chart that says, this is where my 10 people are, but that's totally boutique. If I'm going to grow this community, these are the pieces I need when I hit certain benchmarks, when I hit 25, when I hit 50, when I hit a hundred. Because you want to duplicate the process, right? The, the process is what is going to make your business grow. It is not anything you sell. It is the systems you built your business on. Okay. Make systems, sense? Systems. Yes. It's like Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. System, system, systems. Right. <laughs> but, but I want to, I want to be really, um, I want to be really vulnerable with you. A lot of times we are so close to the problem that we need someone else who's not married to the problem every day. To tell us what to do because you're a great order taker, but to, to just give you three months, six months, 20 hours of free mind space when they just say, do this, you're likely to succeed faster because you're not spending the time to try and do it. That's the key. I didn't hear her speaking Chinese. I didn't understand a word of it. What did you, what do you mean? <laughs> what I mean is, what you're trying to do is something that everyone does. Mm -hmm. So just copy what's successful, tweak it to what your brand and your culture is. Stop trying to overthink it because you're never going to get it done and it's not going to help you 
clear the things that are in your mind because you're so busy thinking about everything that a lot of times we end up being our worst enemy because we we overthink it and we never execute right you're like jerry first we're gonna do this like awesome oh, no, it's, up. It. it's up i, I created the, the the day that i said i was gonna do it i researched the platforms it's created you know right awesome. start putting stuff in there so it's in there i just i was not really that clear about the marketing i started marketing already just like a little bit like i have a facebook group is only like 100 people in there and so i started marketing to to those people just within the last like two days right. so i just really and i but i really didn't know if um because i feel it feels like it's the same kind of way that i was marketing to people in my group to get them to to come in yeah. for one-on-one coaching so and it's a totally a different model I'm like yeah. i don't know if i'm doing this right so yeah, yeah. thank you totally different model yeah no you're yeah. you're on your way I, but the, the oh. thing is it's it's really empowering when you know what to say no to. So you, you know what to say yes, because your membership model is totally different than your boutique model. Right, that is so true. Thank you. Yes, thank you for asking. To piggyback off that, so theoretically, you don't, so when you're starting your, in, into a business, you don't necessarily have to start at the boutique level, correct? Like if you no. get investors, you could go straight into the second model, is that? Yep. You sure can, but you also want to know timing is everything, right? Because you're going to get someone who's going to say, Sarah, I really would like you to coach me. Like, okay. So let the need first present itself before you start building something that no one buys. I think a lot of us do it backwards where we're like, well, I'm going to build this. Like, did anyone ask? Like solve someone's problem. Like that's how you get money. You're solving people's problems because you're trying to save them time. Right. You're trying to save the money for sure. And then three, you're trying to grow and scale. So, I, and I don't like the fluff. I don't really care for fluff. I don't really, I'm like, this is how it is. Let's get to work. That's why Katie's so successful in such a short amount of time because I just tell her, this is the steps to do. And then she's clear. Then she can take action. We don't want the fluff. I, it's what I'm trying to get at. And Ivy, I'm going to pick on you for just a hot second. Like your team, like you want your, your job in making your money is recruitment. Like that's where you make your money. So if you can remove the fluff and say, this is the training series, you know, on this day, we're going to have, you know, a trainer come in and talk to you about this. Like you're removing the fluff. Like they're not going to hurt because you're giving them direct feedback. I put my um, personal cell number because I feel like sometimes, you know, as you process this, the next 24 to 48 hours, you might be like, Char, okay. Can, can, can I just send you? So here's my, per, my personal direct sell. It's, it's for you guys to send me and, and, you know, Sarah as a thank you. Thank you for letting me be here and, and just be able to deep dive and help. I, you know, sometimes you've got to take a step back in order to take 10 steps forward. And I just want to tell you, that's what happens a lot of times when you hop on these kind of calls. It's like, I want to do it all. Well, just take a step back. Just give yourself a pause, a hot pause. I call them hot pauses in our business. Like hot pause, sure just figured us out. We're going to do this. Like hot pause. Like we just got to do that. It's just part of who we are and we grow. Sarah, I, I love to ask any questions. Answer Kelly, if you have any questions, I'd love to, to do that. If there's anything I can do to, to give back, I'd love to do that as well. Thank you so much. Um, you have just poured a ton of value into this group today. And I just... Yes. Yes, a round of applause. Oh, thank you so much, everybody. Way thank you, thank you. 2020 with this group, and I'm super excited about 2021. Um, any more questions, or were we good on questions? Okay, um, we're going to go ahead and probably stop the recording now and enter the okay. second or third part of this. Unless anybody wants, does anybody have anything else to say for the recording? No. Okay. Oh, Sarah, let me, let me add this to the recording because I think this is where <clears throat> we, we kind of create more, you know, I'm going to be speaking on a couple of other topics that you and I have gone back and forth on. And if you guys have other topics that you're like, hey, Char, you know, Sarah, like, please share that with us. We, we love to, we love to deep dive and contribute to that. I think, I think it's just a process, you know, when you learn things and, and Sarah, you're so great at putting this all together. So thank you again for doing that for us women. It is um, an honor. I love this. I love all of you. I love um, getting to learn from experts like all of you. And I, I'm just so excited. So thank you all for coming today.